Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. So, I know what you're thinking. Nicki Minaj is the lesbian RuPaul. Nicki is the lesbian version of RuPaul. Finally, people are talking about this. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Sub Bussington, and welcome back to Hot <laughs> or Rot. Today we're going to be reviewing the unaired runways from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15. These are the looks that the eliminated queens would have worn on the runway if they were still a part of the season by the time the runway happened. And by the way, I collected these from the Drag Race fandom wiki, so shout out to all the moderators over there that run that website and have compiled all these images nicely for us so that we can make a fun video like this. We got 46 looks to cover, randomly inserted into a tournament bracket, and we'll be going through each pair of looks to determine who who moves on to the next round, ultimately ending with the winner of Bus Driver's Ultimate Unaired Runways Tournament from Season 15 of RuPaul's Drag Race, Ru Ru La La Perusa Extravaganza. Hotter Rot tournament. I think I said all the words. But before we jump into that, I do want to extend well wishes to Henny, Stacey Lane Matthews, who actually was recently just in the hospital, which was originally announced via her Facebook page last week, where they wrote, yesterday Stacey was admitted into the hospital. I'm asking everyone to please lift her name in prayer, and if you do not pray, I'm asking that you please send positive vibes her way. Thank you, Joe. And she did later update us that she was able to make it out of the hospital and thanked everyone for their positive vibes, and in some cases, donations to her Venmo account which she shared on her social media and I've linked here in the description of this video if you wanted to help her out too. Now let's see what our eliminated queens from season 15 would have worn on the runway. First up, we've got Irene Dubois in her beautiful nightmare look and Robin Fierce in her puffer please look. And this is actually so funny that these two are paired up next to each other in the bracket. Again, randomly generated because they are both like plant looks. Robin's look is giving me Rose Garden and she also is the gardener. I love little tendrils and the hair that kind of look like thorns and overall what she did with the puffer material is really unique and the concept is campy and whimsical a side of robin that we didn't see a ton of on the runway but is really refreshing here definitely a hot look and irene also giving us a thorny plant girl she interpreted the beautiful nightmare fantasy to look like it appears to be the venus flytrap and she's got the little mouth pieces like as a collar and then coming off of her hips honestly also a hot look this is tough i am gonna go with robin fierce's look here though. I just love the silhouette she created. And next up we've got two looks from two different unused runway categories in season 15. If you're unaware, sometimes Drag Race will, for example, ask queens to bring 16 runways and then only use 14 of those runways when they actually shoot the show. Lucy's was for monochromatic and she's giving me like a little drum major meets Candyland pink fantasy. And Sugar's look is from the unused Check Yourself runway, who is giving us a little Dorothy in Kansas type of fantasy see but make it hoe. And in this round, I'm gonna pick Lucy's look. I enjoy the more unique for her silhouette. I think it looks really put together and proportionized, which I think was a big thing that she did struggle with during the season. And she heard the critiques from the judges. And then obviously she shot this after the show would have aired and has applied some of the critiques that she was receiving about her looks. Sugars is, you know, cropped up in a skirt. We've seen a lot of that from her. I think both looks are hot, but I am gonna go with Lucy. Next up, we've got two looks from Ripper to shreds. This is Amethyst, which they actually did show on the Drag Race reunion episode, which was great to see because again, the queens spend a lot of money on these looks and if they're eliminated super early, the looks never really see the light of day or the fluorescent bulb of the office in this case. And I think here conceptually, I would give Amethyst look a hot, but we really only see this outfit in one position. And I have a feeling if it were on the runway, it could go one of two ways. It's either gonna move super well and be great with all those shred pieces, or it could look messy, which might be why she's sitting down. This was an easy decision for me though here. I'm gonna go with Robin's look. This is giving me like Britney Spears in her denim wedding. I love that she did denim for Ripper to Shreds and the tie dye of that blue and the white and the ombre and the crystals. It's a beautiful look from Robin. Next up we have Aura's Drag Excellence Runway, which wow, oh my god. She's giving me a little like Maleficent with all those crazy feathers dripping down into the cape and the bedazzling, the sequin the hair, she always has that hair right. And she's also giving us that color palette that she loves to tap into with those beiges and browns. It's really, I think, underused in the drag world because so much of it is about color and whoop, 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 bow, bow, bow. 
I mean, just look at my videos. And this look is absolutely hot. The other look is Robin's Starter Engines runway from the ball episode. Again, the idea for this runway was to create RuPaul's iconic racer suit outfit that you see in all the episodes in their own unique style. And Robin absolutely did that here. The orange and the purple is really fun. Girl, she's matching those opposites of the color wheel perfectly. And I think it was a really smart use of the checks on those sleeves. Also a hot look. I've got to go with Aura's Drag Excellence look. That is phenomenal. But you know what's even hotter? Browsing the internet safely, securely, and privately with my favorite <laughs> VPN and today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Click the link in the description of my video to download Surfshark right now. Then instantly connect to one of their over 3,200 servers around the globe. And just like that, your internet browsing traffic is anonymized and encrypted, safe from sneaky snoopers on public Wi-Fi and even your internet service provider who's watching your every move. And I love using Surfshark because they make my internet browsing experience all around better with their clean web ad and pop-up blocker, which can even get rid of those annoying cookie questions that you see on every single website. But that's not all. Surfshark can also help you unlock geo-restricted content on streaming platforms. For example, with just one click, I can surf on over to Argentina and get immediate access to every season of RuPaul's Drag Race and Untucked, all on one streaming platform. And best of all, you can use Surfshark on all of your devices with unlimited device login. Plus, there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the description of this video to get Surfshark right now. And don't forget to use code BUSSY during checkout to get three extra months of Surfshark for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Next up we have another look from Aura. This was her unused monochromatic runway. The all red is really striking like conceptually with the little I guess devil or rabbit horns? Alien horns that she's got on her head? Definitely hot. Red hot. It's going up against Marsha's um Sorry. I'm laughing because her other tie-dye look was nominated for the golden boot. And so I think she posted this to her socials as like an alternate or a makeup or a redo of the tie-dye runway. And it is much prettier and simpler. Like it didn't need an entire essay from her on what conceptually it should have been. It just is a jumper, a romper of tie-dye in pastel. I think for the runway though, it is a little too simple. I would give this like a warming up and I'm gonna go with auras here in the bracket. And next we have Aura's Night of a Thousand Beyonce look inspired by her 2018 Coachella performance versus Irene's unused monochromatic look. And it is very difficult, I think, to evaluate a look that's on a mannequin, but this is what we had in the wiki. It's an interesting look, but I would love to see Irene's like full fantasy of this because she really takes things, I think, to the next level with her makeup her hair. I do like what I see. I'm gonna give it a hot. I like Aura's more though. And that could be an easy decision again because this is like professionally shot and she looks gorgeous. The hair, the costume. I mean, this looks really expensive. And I love how she managed to apply that like Aura Mayari futurism into the Beyonce Coachella look. Like she really took it, put it down, flipped it, reversed it, but also very clearly nailed the reverence. Next we have Amethyst Puffer Please versus Jax's Start Your Engines look from the ball. Amethyst, the puffiness of the body suit I don't think is becoming it's kind of giving like an odd shape it's like a little green lumpy space princess for me gonna give it a rot and Jax's look I'm not in love with either she really did I think make the starter engines thing her own with her name across the chest which I like. I think the yellow detailing on the black cat suit is really striking, but something about that just looks a little arts and craftsy to me. I have to get this look a rot too. That said, I do have to choose one for this bracket. I'm gonna go with Amethyst, marginally better there. And next we've got an illustration for Princess Poppy's beautiful nightmare runway, which I wanted to include because she infamously did not post any of her actual unaired runway looks. And whether they were created and not to her liking, or she just never did professional shoots in them, I'm not sure, but I did in good spirit just want to share some of her designs so that she could be a part of this video and have her ideas out there in the world because now that she is I think not taking drag so seriously it's so much fun like her Robin Glasscock look amazing the Ashley Tisdale thing she did amazing I mean she did a lot of fun stuff this is a gorgeous look what would it actually have looked like as a gown who knows but it's up against Amethyst my favorite ball look which is from the money ball so she's dressed like a pig so be like a piggy bank and conceptually I like what she did with the shimmering scales kind of looking like coins kind of looking like a disco ball and the pig nose is campy it's fun it's silly and it is I think maybe not as polished as some of the other ball looks that we saw but conceptually I like that she took this to a fun place I would give it like a warming up and 
is i would give princess poppy's look a hot but since we actually have amethyst look here to look at i'm gonna go ahead and use hers in the bracket and next up two unused runways the first is amethyst check yourself and the other is robin's monochromatic look stunning like oh my god everyone was talking about how irene was going to be the unaired runway girl of the season and she absolutely is don't get me wrong but robin is another one like she had some great looks this is gorgeous from robin the shape the way it fits the cut the like rouging of the skirt and the tightness of the catsuit it's so beautiful definitely hot and with this look i would give a hot this is a fun like performance look gonna go with robin here in the bracket and next we've got the glove runway from malaysia baby doll fox and or is my favorite ball runway which she chose the hairball for both phenomenal looks and they actually did share malaysia's in the reunion video as well i love the hearts like she's wearing her heart on her sleeve that's the joke and of course the other joke from that one community that one gay community um you can have my heart if you can reach it so maybe she was doing that i also love the play of the, the sequins and the sheerness of the rest of the dress it's really pretty definitely a hot look or is also really amazing i would love to see her actually walk the runway in this because this is that hair that you could tell She'd be having a lot of fun doing little twirls and really giving a show. Absolutely hot. Tough decision here. I think I'm gonna have to choose Malaysia's, partly because we already have some of Aura's look in the next rounds and partly because this is one of those looks. If it's not moving, what does it look like? Next up, we have a look from Irene that she said she originally planned to wear for the Metallica runway, but ended up using it for the premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15 and instead recreated another Metallica look for the Metallica runway kind of multi-purpose situation here i'm glad she got to use it somewhere because wow this is like top tier crazy alien spooky futuristic irene drag i love all the like spikes and the collar girl this is drama she's giving me what's her name rita rapunzel <laughs> Rita, Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers, kind of with all that drama in there. I love that. Really, really pretty. Definitely hot. Lucy's look, kind of giving me e-girl. This is her unused check yourself runway. She's giving me like, she shops at Hot Topic. <laughs> but maybe she's like the cool mom trying to be cool. So she's dressing like her daughter who shops at Hot Topic. Like her daughter is picking things out and she's like, ooh, this would look good on me too. And I do think she looks good. It looks put together. Like let's definitely give her the credit there. I think it's a hot look from Lucy. But stylistically, I, I see all these different looks from Lucy and sometimes I just don't know really who she is still. I'm gonna go with Irene's look here in the bracket. Next we have Aura's Start Your Engines look in a beige and brown cat suit that's definitely doing the iconic RuPaul's racer suit in her own way for sure. That is her color palette. She owns it, she rocks it, she looks great in it. And I love also kind of the retro styling of it. It's very 70s, that kind of Farrah Fawcett type of thing. Like she could be in Charlie's Angels in this telling my children this was Charlie's Angels. At least one of them. Definitely hot. And this up against Sugar's Puffer Please look, which is okay to me in this photo. It's cute. Like, I, I really honestly don't think I've ever seen a Sugar and Spice look that I didn't like or think could be applicable in some form or fashion. But I'm not really getting a ton of puffer. I see it, of course, in the, like, giant Raver Girl-inspired boot covers, and I love the detail of that outfit. I maybe would have liked to have seen more puffer or again a different type of silhouette i think still a really cute and hot look but when you look at the catalog some of the other queens did really crazy different silhouettes and they did more similar types of look for most of the looks so i'm gonna go with aura and next up actually in the same category by random chance we have irene's tie-dye look which she has taken into the like rococo if you will, inspired fantasy, which is something that the women of the established elite or royalty would have worn in like, I think the 18th century. Historians, maybe correct me in the comments below. And you know, we've seen so many interpretations of this type of look on Drag Race over the years. And I love that Irene found a way to make it unique. Definitely hot. Spices look over here. It's cute. Like it's not much more than cute. And I've got to give it a rot. It's just feels a little, I want to show off my hot body. So I'm going to put strips of fabric on it. <laughs> Which like, yeah, girl, hot body. Absolutely. I love that she can rock it. I could never. Next up, we have Irene's Metallica look, which again was her second iteration of this runway versus Irene's... 
Oh, her favorite ball runway, which I'm guessing here was the ball ball. This is very like early Gaga, like her paparazzi type of silhouette that she would do with the Mickey Mouse type of glasses and kind of McQueen in some ways. I don't love the hip peplum pads, accessories, whatever you want to call those wings down there. Like it feels very those ball design challenges when they give the girls a bunch of materials and then they don't totally integrate the materials or transform them into a new look. They just kind of take them apart and put them onto like a corset. And it's a cute look. Don't get me wrong. I also don't think the hair matches though. I'm gonna give it a rot. It's not my favorite. Irene's Metallica look though. Phenomenal. She's kind of giving like a little, you know, Metallica hairband 80s fantasy here, which I so appreciate. Love the chaps. Love the styling, the detail, and that signature Irene like tendril swoopy thing, alien thing she does. She's even integrated into the makeup. Great look from her. Absolutely hot. It's gonna move to the next round. And next up we've got Princess Poppy's tie-dye look, which was seen in what you packing versus Sugar's favorite ball runway, which I believe was the Sugar Ball very appropriate. And it wasn't immediately apparent to me that there actually was candy inspiration here. But when you zoom in, you can see that she has detailed this corset with those candy hearts. Girl, she's your little valentine. Mm. And now that this is very Y2K, Paris Hilton meets Branstall meets Ariana Grande in a way with that short little skirt that's all blown out with the ruffles. I think it's really cute. Love the look. I think it's hot. And Princess Poppy's tie-dye look. I don't think it's anything we've never seen before. I'd give it a rot. So sugar, we'll move on. And next we have Irene's Puffer Please look, which was featured in the reunion episode and Jax's tie-dye look. Did Jax and sugar, <laughs> did they make their looks in the same place. It's basically the same concept. I don't know what possessed them to both just throw like tie dyed fabric strips all over their bodies, but go off sis. Oh, no correction. Correction. This is her rip her to shreds look. So that makes a lot more sense. Still don't love it though. I just don't love strips of fabric like that. The hair doesn't make any sense for me with this. It's just, it's just too much going on. I don't like it. It's a rot. Irene's look. It's gorgeous. Obviously the gloves with the drama of that giant coat and like what an interesting way to integrate that puffer material from a coat into a look that you would never think to do it in. This looks absolutely hot. And also if you're new here, I want to point out that the little icon profile pictures on these unaired runway looks you're seeing are from my patrons who get exclusive patron benefits on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen, like the ability to vote in Honda's Todd polls, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, access to exclusive videos, and of course, early access to my YouTube videos. And you can join them and help support my channel financially by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. And now we'll round out the left side of the bracket and then move over to the right. So very quickly, speed round, Robin versus Lucy. Robin here. Ooh, Robin versus Aura. Aura takes this for me. Aura versus Aura, her Beyonce look, stellar. It's gonna take that. I wish I could just delete this section of the bracket. We're gonna go with her Moneyball look. This both from Amethyst. Ooh, Robin's monochromatic look versus Malaysia's glove look. Definitely the glove look. Both great though. Irene's original Metallica. Yeah, takes it there for me. And next Irene's tie-dye versus Irene's second Metallica look. Gonna go with her tie-dye. So great. I couldn't find look in your Apple oh, Music library. You scared the sh out of me. Stop. She always does that. No. Oh my God. <laughs> Girl, she's about to get unplugged. Next up in the bracket is Sugar Sugar Ball look versus Irene's Puffer Please. Definitely Irene. Robin's Puffer. Aura's Excellence. Obviously. That's so hard to beat. Or it's Beyonce versus Amethyst Moneyball. Yes, Aura. Malaysia versus Irene here. That look from Irene is really stellar. I've got to go with that. Irene versus Irene. Her puffer versus her tie-dye. That's a tough choice. I'm going to pick the puffer please look just because I feel like we have seen so much of the Rococo style done in different ways on Drag Race. And I feel like the puffer one's more unique and I really appreciate that. Aura's Drag Excellence versus her Beyonce. Excellence look. It's so good. Irene versus Irene. Metallica versus puffer. Let me go with the Metallica. These two looks, I mean, both of them are so perfectly branded to the queens that are wearing them. Like you look at these, you know exactly which queen this is, what her style, what her brand, like her taste, you totally get it. I think this is probably the toughest choice I'll make for this whole bracket. I'm leaning towards Aura. I've got to go with Aura's look. It's so much, so intricate. It's very like Vegas costumey, all that. But yeah. Aura takes the left side of her bracket. And now we're going to move into the right side. We have Irene's glove look versus Spice's Beyonce look, which is a look recreated from Beyonce's look she did for Diddy's 50th birthday in 2019, which feels very niche to me. I'm not sure if I should know like what she wore for that event, but I don't know. Maybe I'm missing some piece of culture there. I'm not sure. I think Spice looks phenomenal here. This is so gorgeous from her and exactly what I think she really needed to show the judges on Drag Race because, oh my God, I just realized she's like standing at her apartment door.
door, just like standing in front of the stairs. A true bedroom queen after my own heart. Never step outside if there's not a paycheck to collect. <laughs> bedroom queen motto. Spice gets a hot for me. Irene's look, while I appreciate the camp and what she was leaning into here, it's not my favorite. You know, Violet Chachki for the Met Gala a couple years ago wore for the camp one. She actually wore a dress that had like a glove coming off the back of it and the hand was the train of the dress. And that I think made a lot more sense than having the glove like grabbing you on the back because this takes it to a very, almost looks like this should be in a horror movie or something. Like the Phantom of the Opera is really what I'm getting here. I like it in that sense. I just, I'm not so sure about like the dress line, the solid black, solid red, something there is just not totally cohesive. I'm gonna give it a warming up and go with Spice's look for the bracket. And next up we have Spice's unused Check Yourself Runway, which I think she wore in some kind of press interview versus is Aura's gloves runway in all white. I love that the gloves are the focus of that look. It really catches your eye. And also, I think this would be so good in like a burlesque style performance. Obviously, I'm gonna give this to Aura's gloves look. I think it's absolutely hot, so conceptually fun and visually interesting. Spice's check yourself look here is kind of like a less hot version of the Starcher Engines look that she actually did wear for the ball. I'm gonna give it a warming up. It's just not like inspiring me to check myself. Next up, we have Sugar's Beyonce look, which is a recreation of a look that she wore the year 2000, the Source Hip Hop Music Awards. And that is up against Malaysia's Drag Excellence look. I think the trumpet skirt is pretty. I love the amount of fabric that's touching the ground. I love the dramatic shawling, the caping. This is pageantry, girl. Nothing, I think, though, that is really branded in the fun and slightly campy, but gorgeous pageant realm that Malaysia really, I think, sold to us on the show and now continues to do after the show. Like for example, with the fox ears on her looks that I love. We love a branded element. This to me is just kind of like any queen really could wear this dress, I think, and look pretty. It's hot, but spice? Sugar? This is really, I think, perfect for her because it's that sassy, fun, and flirty, very 2000s brat style type of Christina Aguilera, very inspired fashion, blended all into what Sugar and Spice do so well. Really, really fun and unique for her, and that's what I'm gonna give to Sugar. And next up, I'll say it. We were robbed. We were robbed of seeing some of these looks from Aura. Girl, she spent the money. She spent the cash money on these runways. I mean, my God. And she looks damn good in these looks. She looks damn good in these looks. This look very obviously inspired by her heritage. I love the detailing on the front part of the skirt, the shawling, and like the rip her to shreds part of this runway is integrated into those shawl and cape elements. She's kind of like a tattered, but beautifully and elegant time-worn warrior. And then that's up against Amethyst. And this is her night of a thousand Beyonce's look from the 2002 TRL interview. Not my favorite interpretation here. It is very, to her credit, obviously inspired by what Beyonce was wearing. It really wasn't a cute look in my opinion. It's not my favorite thing that Beyonce's worn, but that's what people were doing in the 2000s. It was, everything was denim. Denim this, denim that. Denim, denim, denim. Hardly know them. Something I think is missing in the shaping of the actual dress. It needs to be longer, like cut a little longer. I don't know, it's a rot for me. Aura's gonna move on. Next up we have Robin's Beyonce runway, inspired by her dress from the 2014 on the run tour. Really gorgeous, love the color, the monochromaticness, the billowing, the capes, everything is absolutely gorgeous. They're totally hot. And that is up against another Beyonce look from Princess Poppy, allegedly inspired by the 2004 Grammys. I don't know, this could have been cute on. A dress can look like one way on a mannequin or on the rack and like a Totally different thing when it's on your body. I'm getting like high school dance vibes from it though. I don't love it. Obviously Robin is gonna take this round for me. And next we have Irene Start Your Engines Look, Chef's Kiss against, oh my God, Aura's Unused Check Yourself Runway. This, mm, these are good looks. So both totally hot. Aura, she has no right to look this good in these photos. She has no right to be serving the fashion and the eleganza that she's giving. These looks are insane from her. Gotta give it to Aura though. Like totally love the look from Irene. And I really love specifically that she did that big wavy nat natural, you know, kind of beachy blonde hair. Again, very giving that Charlie's Angels type of fantasy for me. And next up we have Sugar's Start Your Engine look versus Amethyst Tie-Dye look. Amethyst here, she's giving very like flower power. I don't love this. I'm a little confused by like the red shoe as well with it. It's just not my favorite 
thing. I'm gonna give it a run. And sugars, look, I'll say also not my favorite thing. Spice's interpretation of this same runway, and I am having to make the comparison, right? Because they are twins and like they look so similar. And I'm just really thinking like, okay, well, Spice's I think was maybe interpreted a little bit better but i do like that sugar here is kind of giving me amy polar in mean girls like the mom when she's you know doing that one scene and the dog is biting the things i'm liking it more and more the more i look at it because i'm seeing the camp and i'm seeing the references and you know what i do like it track suits are in that's hot sugar's gonna move on here Amethyst, I'm so sorry, that's gonna be a rot. And now let's go ahead and round out the second half of the bracket. We've got Spice's Beyonce look versus Aura's glove look. I'm gonna go with Spice. Wow, Aura's Ripper to Shreds, Sugar's Beyonce. Gotta go with Aura. Oof, Robin and Aura. That look from Aura is so interesting. I've never seen anything like that. We've got Spice's Beyonce look versus Aura's Ripper to Shreds. And I'm gonna give it to Spice here because it was so different from her. And she looks so damn good. Aura's Check Yourself Unused versus <laughs> Sugar's Start Your Engines. I'm gonna give it to Aura. Next is Spice and Aura. I'm gonna give this one to Spice. That means for me, Spice did win the second half of the bracket. Which, yeah, I think that's I think that's right. If this had, for example, been up against a different look earlier on in the bracket, like maybe a different one of Aura's or a different one of Irene's, this could be a totally different ending here. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. In our final bracket, we have Aura's Drag Excellence, Spice's Beyonce look, which really could be a Drag Excellence look for her. I think it's really great but Aura's gonna take it. The queen of unaired runways in Bussy Queen's Hot or Rat video is Aura Mayari for her drag excellence. Gorgeous, gorgeous gowns. But as always, I would love to know what y'all thought about these runways, which look got your hottest hot, and let me know in the comments which part of the bracket would have gone differently for you if you were the one here recording the video and clicking the buttons. Finally, let's talk hottest hot for me in the bracket by default. I'm gonna give it to Aura, who, yes, deserves it. But I did also ask my patrons to vote on their hottest hots and they voted on their hottest hot without seeing the bracket set up and they chose Irene Dubois in her puffer please look. And lastly I want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor Surfshark. Don't forget you can download Surfshark by using the link in the description of my video and when you use code BUSSY during checkout you'll get three extra months of Surfshark for free. And I also want to give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Daniel Sandez, Dorothy Hall, Fa, Leisha, Frankie, Jeffrey Steenberg, Laura, Asset, Louis Labrador, Matthew Burns, Matto, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Steven Topher, Tyler Hendricks, M, D, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See you later. Love ya. Bye.